Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are starting week four of the positive side quilt along. This is when it starts to get really fun. We're gonna be assembling our quilt top. So this week we're working on the center and next week we'll be adding the border and that'll be the final week. So let's get started. So we have made all the big blocks the last two weeks. I have all 30 of the blocks that I need for this quilt here. And then also uh, in my bin, I have the things needed for the small pluses. And this uh, under here is sashing. Sashing uh, and the rest of the things we need for the quilt. And then this is my binding because I chose to use the same binding as my background. The next step is just gonna to be to lay this all out. So I'm gonna start by taking the 30 plus blocks and laying them out anywhere. Um, I don't have, I don't use a design board. Uh, this is a pool table and it's covered. I'm gonna to try to use that. They won't fit probably exactly in the width, but I'll squeeze it just to make it fit. I wanna get an idea of color placement. So first I'm just gonna take this stack and just like lay them out how they are. And then, um, and it doesn't matter what's by what. And then what I'll do is I will, from there, I'll start moving it around until I like the way the colors look together. I like the way that they're laid out and everything looks good to me. And we're laying them out um, across is five and down is six. So six rows of five blocks. And I'm like I said, I'm not paying attention to color right now at all. I'm just getting these blocks out here so I could see what I have to work with. And then I will go from there. I have them all laid out now and uh, now I just like look at it for a little bit and kind of see what I want to do. I could do kind of like a rainbow ombre if I wanted. There's enough of each color to spread them either vertically or diagonally. But I think for this one, I'm just going to mix them all up and I'm going to try to distribute the colors evenly enough so that um, they all just complement each other and look nice together. So here's the layout that I've settled upon. Now what I'm going to do is just like spread it out just a little bit and I'm gonna add the background sashing strips. The next step is to get your print squares that were cut from the layer cakes and you're going to fill in all the spots that need a plus. Now the reason why I did these in squares instead of like long pieces that you didn't have to then assemble. So for example, if I took my, just say I wanted my red here. So for example, say I wanted to put this red plus right here. The reason why I did this in individual squares instead of uh, a rectangle is because in some versions, you might want to make these scrappy. So I wanted to leave that option available because um, I think scrappy would look really pretty, uh, especially in contrast to these large plus blocks. But I am gonna do mine all one color instead of scrappy. And once this is together, those seams, they don't really show up too much and they don't add, add bulk to it. So I felt comfortable doing it like that. So I am going to go around the quilt now and I'm here, I am paying attention uh, to where I want to place those colors. So, I mean, if you have to move some, it's no big deal, but since these are a lot of little pieces, I'm gonna look at like where I want, for example, this red, it's not gonna stay there because this is a red, but I'm gonna look like, where do I need a red? And I'll go and I'll put that plus there. Also, while I'm doing this, I am setting aside the ones to make the half plus block. So you'll see in the instructions for the pattern that we have half plus blocks. And we're gonna set those pieces up to make them now. So say for example, I wanted uh, an orange plus right here. So these two get sewn to my background sashing and that's gonna make this block row. But for the border, we have some plus blocks on the border. So we are gonna make a half plus block. We're gonna add two background squares here and a strip of background and this will be sewn on as a border. So uh, I am paying attention to how I want those around the border 
pluses placed also. So we're laying out all of our squares cut from our layer cakes here uh, in between the blocks and also all around the edge. So I've gone ahead and placed all my two inch squares here on the borders and also in the center. And I'll lay them out more like this one once I'm ready. But first we're gonna work on the half plus blocks that are used in the border. I brought over everything I needed to make these plus blocks. So I have four uh, squares. One square is left behind for the sashing row. So I have four um, of each of the prints here. And then um, I have the square, the small squares cut from the background and I have the strips cut from the background. So if you refer to the pattern, you can see what one of these blocks looked like. I love to chain piece here. What I'm going to do is show you the way I would make these blocks. So this is how we're going to start. This block is kind of laid out like this and then it has uh, a top up here. So first we're gonna piece these two rows and then we're gonna add the top. So for now I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna piece these in a grid. So I'm gonna take these two and lay them on top of these two. And sew these through. And then what I'm gonna do, we're gonna add this column later. So I'm just gonna take this one and just flip it over and set it here. Then I'm gonna keep doing this with all of my pieces. So I have that set up. I'm gonna flip one upside down there because later I'll flip that stack over and we'll add the next column. And they'll all be in order if I keep it like that. Next color and we're just gonna keep doing this uh, with this whole stack of border blocks I'm on the last one now and I want to show you what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to cut the thread and I'm going to leave these attached and I'm just going to pull all these back till I'm at the first one. Now here I am. So when I open this, if I open the first two, you're going to see this is the makings of our half plus block. So to fix this, now I, this pile that I had everything upside down I was adding to, I just flip it over and now there's one that I need right on top. And then this is what we're gonna add to it. So I'm gonna take a background square for the top row of each one and sew that down. And then I'm gonna take the last color piece that I have right here and sew that on. And I'm just gonna leave all the threads attached. This is chain piecing at its finest and it works so great. So the first row, is going to have a background square and the second row is going to have the matching uh, color square. So we get to this next one again. This is a different one. So I'm going to take one background square for this top row. And then I'm going to take the matching, oops, the matching uh, print square for the next one. And then I'm going to repeat this all the way down this chain. I'm on my last one and let me show you the next step button. So let's finish this up. Now um, I'm going to cut the thread and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut between each uh, plus half plus block. So for example, these two pieces go to one. So I'm going to come above it and cut and I'm going to be left with this. So these two pieces go to another. Every, every half plus block here has two uh, rows. So I'm just cutting in between the actual plus blocks. And if you make a mistake and just cut all of them apart or cut at the wrong spot, it doesn't matter because you just, we're just gonna sew these together anyway, but I don't feel the need to cut the chains between each one. Um, if you didn't like working with it like this, you absolutely could. But what I do then is, so for example, this one's hooked together still. Uh, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is lay it flat 
and then I'm gonna take the other one, fold it over, and then we're gonna sew it together along this long side. Okay. And I'm gonna keep doing that for all of these that we just made here. So right now we're sewing together. Look, we're almost finished. So we're, after we do this, we're gonna have this sewn together. And then all we need to do is add a top piece and then the half plus blocks are finished so i'm just going to keep um you know folding one row on top of the next row sewing this together so that was my last um block like this we're so close, we just need to add one background rectangle. So what I do is I just pick up the whole thing, I leave it hooked, and I turn it around. And then now you can see it looks like that. And all we need to do is sew this rectangle on. So I just match it up. And then I start sewing. So now I just cut each of the blocks apart there's two strings holding them together um, this is what they look like and then I will just go set them back around the quilt to be further assembled later into into the border someone's made themselves a little sitting spot right on the edge there <laughs> um, and now you just go around the quilt and you find the one you made so for example um can't really see it but i have an orange one right here and then i just lay that by it so i remember where it goes now the next step is to start start assembling the rows and to do this uh what i do is i come through and if, if you haven't already laid out your pluses you'll want to lay out your pluses and you can choose to do um you know the sashing rows first the block rows first i kind of just go in order from top to bottom and i do it all at once if you wanted to pin um at the first block of each row and kind of write on it row one sashing row one block row one um you know block row two sashing row two you could do that if i can't get it all done in one setting i will do that um but i'm just gonna start and then see where I leave off. And usually as I go, once I make this block row and this sashing row, I'm gonna sew those two together. Then if I make this block row, I can sew it on. And then if I need to stop, I'll label the rest just so I know. Let's work on the block row first. So I'm gonna pick up the sashing pieces. So this sashing right here is composed of this square and this square. I just move them to the middle so that I can easily pick these up without getting them mixed up. And then I take one, two, three, and four. And I take these to the sewing machine like this, and I make the sashing rows. Now, you could just as easily, if you wanted, make all of the sashing strips at once. I usually kind of go row by row. So I'm gonna sew, and you can chain piece this. You can cut between, this is, uh, this flannel is like letting these stick. So I'm just gonna see if I can, there's not that many. So I'm just gonna see if they can balance on my table here without removing those. It'll, it'll take away from um, the possibility of me getting confused on what goes with what. If you're worried about getting confused, you can just sew one strip at a time. There's only four of these sashing pieces in each row. So if you can see, I made them balance here on my table and now I can just turn them around. The flannel is still sticking even if it moves. So now I can just get these other ones, sew them together. And then the, the way, if you, if you get them out of order or if you don't know, remember what one's the top and what one's the bottom, uh, that's okay because the way you can check yourself is if you have every everything still laying out uh, You can You'll be able to see based on the rest of the plus laying there What's what 
So now that I have these made, I'm just gonna cut them apart quick. We'll go back over to where I have the quilt laid out and we'll put these in their block row. Now I can come back and I can fill them in and I can match um, this one and this one, for example, I know this goes here. Then my next one, I know the purples at the bottom, it matches that, the reds at the top, it matches this. If I go to my next one, it's the same thing and it's laying just right. So I'm double checking my placement here before I assemble this block row. And now that I have all of those sashing pieces made, I just gather in order my blocks and my sashing pieces and we're gonna sew the first block row together. And for the block rows, I'm just gonna work one at a time. I'm not going to do worry about chain piecing these. Uh, with this quilt, I basically, right now, I'm like focusing on making sure that everything is in the place I put it and nothing is getting shifted. So I'm sewing these sashing pieces that we just made to the block row to make the block row. And when I sew one, this is what it looks like so far. And if you needed to double check, you could double check, like, are these placed the right way? Yes, I remember I had orange on the top and this like reddish orange on the bottom. Then I just get my next plus block and I set it on top. Now you could pin or you could do kind of like whatever way you want to work here. If you want to press it every step, if you want to pin, you just like adapt this to your own process. This is just how I do it. So I'm just going to align them on the sides and hold everything together. And then we're going to just sew this right into place. This is what we have so far now. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to add my next sashing. And we're going to do keep continue on in this way to make the block row. Now I finished sewing that row together, so let me lay it back out. And if you have trouble remembering, you can also take pictures as you go and then just refer back to your phone picture. But you can see this row is together. Everything is correct because my sashing pieces are matching up and so are the pieces to my outer border. So next I'm gonna pick up the pieces for this sashing row. So the way that I do this is I kind of take all three and set it on the next one. And um, I kind of keep these in order pretty good, but I think it's like, it just comes with practice. So whatever way works for you is just fine. And then I'm gonna take the last three, the last one's gonna have an end, the three before it, and then I'm just gonna stack them and take them to my sewing machine like this. And now here, um, I'll just sew these. I'm just gonna be trimming in between each block, making one really long sashing row. And so now I'm at the next part. I added the end. This is like the end of one side. Now we're gonna have three of one color going in a row. That was my, this is my first plus inside the quilt, the first small plus. So this is the middle row of it coming together. Okay, and then next we're gonna add the background, the next background sashing strip. And we're just gonna keep continuing in the same way. So we're gonna have one on the outside. This is gonna meet up with the half plus blocks of the border. We have the first plus block in this row, and this is gonna match up with the sashing above it and below it to create a small plus. And then the next thing I'm gonna sew is my next three onto this, and I'm gonna continue just all the way across this row, adding these pieces in the order that I have them stacked so nothing gets out of order on me, and all of my pieces will match back up when I go over to the quilt. I have my row sewn together, and now I'm just gonna lay it out the correct way. So I'm matching up the pluses to make sure I have everything correct. Now, if you wanted, you could continue on and just make the block row, the sashing row, the block row. Um, you can do it that way without assembling. 
I like to assemble kind of as I go. So I'm gonna take this sashing row and this block row and sew them together next before I continue on. I've brought the row over to my sewing machine and I'm just getting it laid out. Now again, like I said, you can press, you can pin, you can do whatever works for you. Um, this is what works for me. So I'm just lining these up with my fingers. I haven't pressed yet. I will press um, once this top is complete. So I'm just sewing the sashing row that I just made to the block row. And I kind of, um, I don't know, I like the feeling of assembling as I go because it just feels like you're making progress and you're watching your quilt just come together as you work to sew all the pieces because there's a lot of pieces in the sashing rows and the block rows because you're still kind of assembling the sashing as you go. Uh, so this is what I like to do. It helps me feel like um, I'm really making some progress here. And then what I'll do next is I'll just continue down. I'll make the next block row. I'll make the next sashing row. I'll sew those onto this one. And then, like I said, at any point, if I have to stop, if I can't do this in one sitting, um, I just label whatever I have left so that when I come back to it, I don't forget or I don't um, misplace it uh, in the positioning of this quilt. And now this row and this sashing row are assembled and I'm just going to continue on doing exactly the same process for the rest of the quilt that I have here. I have finished sewing all of the block rows and sashing rows together and this is what my quilt is looking like so far. I am so excited about this. Uh, what I also did was I set aside the half plus blocks for the border because we're not going to assemble the border until next week but we are getting so close so that wraps it up for this week i loved putting my blocks together and turning them into a quilt top i hope you have fun with this week's assignment um, I also wanted to make a note that while I did assemble the half plus blocks this week, because I like to do it that way with the quilt laid out, you don't have to if you don't want to. Once you have everything laid out, you can take those half plus blocks and set them aside for next week, because next week we are officially making the border. Uh, I went ahead and assembled them, but if you don't have enough time to do that and you just wanna focus on the block rows and the sashing rows, you can do that this week. And then next week, you can start off by making your half plus blocks and then assembling the borders to finish off the top. If you have any questions on this week, just let me know and I'll be sure to answer. And if not, I will see you back here soon. Thanks for following along.